What's up guys, DJ Doomslayer here, and you're tuned in to Doom to Hell on Metal Devastation Radio. Tonight I have a very special guest, it's uh, Richie Randall from Grave Huffer. You guys might have been familiar with their new stuff, because they just released a new EP that we've been playing the shit out of, because it's kick-ass. So Randy, how are you doing today? Hey man, I'm doing good, how are you? I'm doing fine, man. With this, uh... With this new EP you guys did, uh, your song, uh, Demon, eh, Demon Face, I know you based uh, that off of, uh, Edward Mordrake, uh, what was, what about him made you guys want to do a song about him? Um, you know, I can't, I don't really remember exactly, but, um, I remember, I don't know if I was just, uh, scrolling on Facebook or something, and somebody had posted, like, it was, um, it was a picture, and I'm not sure if it, I don't think it's like a totally accurate, like, medical picture, but it was kind of more like one of those uh, wax museum kind of things. And I saw that, you know, that's, that's like, man, that's a weird picture. But, but it was, it was like his, it almost looked like a mummy kind of thing, but he had two faces. So I was like, man, that, that's just really weird. And so, I got to researching the guy and I told James, our singer, I was like, man, it'd be really cool to write a song about this. And so we already had some music that would fit perfect with it. So, you know, James just took the lyrics and just went with it and we sent him a demo of, of the song and I mean, it fit really well because like, the song starts off kind of slow and sludgy, kind of builds in intensity. Yeah. And it's kind of like how his life was, you know. I mean, he just, he grew up being, you know, ridiculed and, you know, and just like, he was a freak of nature, basically, you know. Um, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, he um, just kind of lost his, his mind because this demon face that was in the back of his head would just, he would like, be happy when Mordrake was sad and be sad when Mordrake was happy and you know it, it just like it kept him awake at night it was just I mean it would just be crazy like I, I just could not you know could not imagine having somebody's like a conjoined twin parasitic twin whatever you want to call it just yeah stuck to you you know it, it just would be crazy I mean it, it drove him crazy enough to where he's like you know i can't live like this anymore so he he committed suicide at, uh, at age 23 and he drank a bottle of uh, poison i believe and that's kind of where the artwork comes in for the for the seven inch um, he's getting ready to down this bottle of poison while the parasitic twins just <laughs> it's laughing at him and stuff you know and it's like oh so so yeah, uh, the song just basically is about his life, how he ends up going crazy and finally offs himself, you know. <laughs> Pretty brutal stuff. Oh yeah, that's really fucking brutal, man. Yeah. Uh, what about um, with the other song, Stalingrad's Cross? What was the meaning behind that song? Like, what inspired you guys to write that? Now, Stalingrad's Cross was definitely James's idea. Um, I remember, if, like, music-wise, um, it was last year, like, when uh, Judas Priest's new album, Firepower, came out. Oh, uh, yeah. I think it was actually before the album came out. They had a song called Lightning Strike, and I was just messing around with the with that riff, you know? And uh, I was over at our bass player Mike's house, and we were going to sit down and write some stuff. Well, I was waiting on him for something, and then I started kind of playing a riff that kind of sounded like it, you know? It was inspired by Priest. And that's basically what Stalingrad's Cross turned into. I mean, the initial scene was, was Priest, and then it kind of went from there. But um, we're playing at practice one day with the rest of the band, and James is like, man, this song just sounds like a, a march, you know? It sounds like a march into battle or a march into war. And he just, he always wanted to write a song about the Battle of Stalingrad, and that's that's basically what, what it's all about. Like, one verse talks about the Germans ask, you know, them marching into Stalingrad, and then the second verse talks about what the Russians thought with the oncoming uh, German soldiers, and then um, the, re 
rest of the song basically just deals with the atrocities of war and, and you know, how things turned out, you know, the 1.6 million people that died. It is just a grim scene, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's fucking cool. That's what I I thought the song was based about, but I I, I wasn't entirely sure at first. So it's, yeah. co- it's cool to get that. The actual... Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say it's cool that I got that clarified now. Yeah, um, like Stalingrad's Cross. As far as that, the, the title comes from when the Germans were marching into the city of Stalingrad. Uh, it was on the Volga River, and across the river were a bunch of oil fields, Russian oil fields. And um, Stalin sent his uh, troops to the oil fields and had, and he's like, "We're going to set these on fire because Germany's not going to get our oil." Yeah. So he he ordered them to set the, the oil on fire, and and when Germany were marching towards Stalingrad, they saw this cross of black cross of smoke. So that's the Stalingrad's cross, and they took that as a good omen, like, okay, God, God blessed us to win this battle, and you know, <laughs> that didn't quite turn out that way. <laughs> yeah, everybody who's fucking marched into Russia, not prepared for the fucking winter, has never actually done that very well. No, no, I mean, it's and, and that's really, you know, that's what killed over half the troops was just the brutal weather, the winter. Yeah, yeah. I remember re- you know. reading about that shit, like how the Germans were so unprepared for the fucking winter in Russia that they were making they were making shoes out of like hay and shit. Like it's yeah. it was really fucking brutal. Yeah, dude. I mean, it, it's like it's crazy, like what they went through, you know, on both sides to just survive. Yeah, let alone fight a battle. You spoke about the uh, the artwork. For the album before who actually uh, did the artwork for that um actually we had two different artists that one did Stalingrad's Cross and one did Demon Face oh. uh for Demon Face um it was a guy named Carl Dahmer and he lives just north of us in Kansas City and he's got a uh, a company called Dahmer Art and yes he is related to Jeffrey Dahmer <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I can't remember the exact story but it's kind of crazy but uh, um, he he has, he did our first album cover, and he's done some of our T-shirt designs. And his style is more of this like horror comic kind of vibe. And we just thought that his style would fit perfect for Demon Face. Oh yeah, and, uh, yeah. And so the uh, Stalingrad's Cross art, uh, we had just got uh, in contact with a German artist. He actually lives in Germany, and Grayson Style Blood Artworks and he did our most recent t-shirt and it's got like this weird like horned guy with a gas mask on and he's holding this car like a flag with the grave oh yeah grave. yeah that he did that and we thought it'd be cool if he could do this you know stall and grass cross and have that character like hiding in the background or something and so so he did that for us and he put this the stall and grass cross you know the black cross of smoke and the Germans soldiers marching in and everything and there's bodies everywhere so so he, I mean he nailed it so it, really cool you know two different completely different artists and two completely different subjects and so we thought man well, let's have two different people do it and it turned out killer yeah that's really fucking cool it seems like you made some really fucking cool choices on artists thanks man thanks uh, with with this new EP, you know, you've been working with uh, No Slip Records on that, and I saw that you guys had it in so many different colors, and I'm, like, I haven't got the chance to buy one yet, but I've been meaning to, but I was just like, shit, you guys got so many fucking variations of it, and I, I, I was wondering if, uh, like, how that whole collaboration with them has been going, and if you guys plan to do any more with them. Uh, yeah, the, um, the collaboration with No Slip has been just it's been tremendous it's been fantastic um it's cool because robert pilson his last name is no slip backwards that's his last you know the pilson <laughs> it's no slip backwards that's uh kind of like the the whole thing behind the, the name so <laughs> kind of cool but um we had initially wanted him to put out your fault our previous full-length record and at the time he was 
wasn't real sure about going into like the thrash kind of punk stuff that we do and he was just doing pretty much doom stoner you know fuzz that kind of thing and he said he'd been thinking about it he goes you know um if he goes if you can't find anybody by the end of you know last year or whatever it was he goes he, he goes I, i'll think about putting it out well we ended up you know hooking up with blunt face and, and and doing it through them and then um when the opportunity came up to to do the uh, seven inch and no slip i think i talked to them and then they're the ones that actually actually suggested hey why don't we do an ep and kind of test the waters <clears throat> and so it was basically this was their idea to do the two song ep and it was their idea as far as like the color variations and uh, i think there's four different ones there's like a white uh, white with black splatter black with white splatter a solid white and then like a smoky gray and then one of the splatter variations comes with a seven inch slip mat that's got the gray plus with a uh, star pentagrave logo on it oh and yeah it's freaking badass and we're uh, on our ends we're gonna do two different shirts you know one with the stalingrad's cross artwork and one with the dean face artwork for our pre-orders and that'll be coming probably within the next couple of weeks so um so yeah that's that's the plan and then we're gonna start writing new material for a full length on no slip here in uh july oh probably shit start. yeah yeah and then we're gonna we'll probably record it in november and december so yeah it's it's rolling right along and we got a lot of shows coming up too so we did have to take a break in july to to start writing so we can record in the winter because the winter time is about the that's the best time to record so. oh yeah yeah uh s- since you mentioned uh the new material you're working on i noticed like you know earlier when you're talking about uh stalingrad's cross how that new judas priest album kind of influenced you riff wise and uh recently i think it was last week i was playing uh i think it was stalingrad's cross and it was you know people in chat like jason aaron wood and stuff they were talking about how cool it is that you guys have like experimented and like how different this EP is from the rest of the stuff you guys have done. And I was wondering if you guys are going to be experimenting even more with this new album. It's so funny you mentioned that. Um, I was having a conversation with our singer like about an hour before you called, and that's exactly what we were talking about, like doing some experimenting in the studio and just writing some weird weird stuff but still like super like intense and like kind of scary sounding and you know that I think that's the goal was to just keep pushing the envelope and um we don't, we don't want to change our sound like drastically we yeah just, we want it to be natural um uh, like on Stalingrad's Cross there's like banjo and slide pedal steel guitar but it's not you know it doesn't sound like country you know it just gives it kind of a haunting quality you know it's, it's just yeah. something kind of different you know and uh, and Demon Face, you know, we recorded us laughing and crying and stuff, you know. <laughs> it just, you know, we were just having fun in the studio, and that's kind of what the EP was about. Was like, let's let's uh, push the push the envelope a little bit, you know. And, yeah. and it's not it's not anything real crazy, but yeah, a lot of people have said, man, this is really different. Uh, it, it, it's kind of weird because when we wrote the stuff, it was we had, you know, we were, it was stuff we had written not long after we recorded the Your Fault stuff, so it didn't seem like it was different to us. But once you record stuff, and then, you know, having a different drum or two, that that probably affected the sound a little bit, so I can understand it. Oh, yeah. So how is it performing with the new drummer? Man, he's, he's like half our age. So <laughs> it's kind of cool, you know, like, you know, he's the one that's kind of giving us a kick in the pants, you know, so it's like, all right, guys, man, we're going to play fast, you know? <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it's cool, you know? I mean, he, he's got energy to spare, and he's a, just a real nice kid, you know? I mean, to us, he's a kid. <laughs> you know, we're all on our mid to late 40s, and he's like 21, 22 years old. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah. And uh, so um, he's in other bands and stuff, and when people ask him about, hey, what are you, what are you guys doing with Grave Huffer? Well, he calls us Dad Huffer. <laughs> So, so you know, we're all we're like 
you know, his dad's age. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're dad Hufford. But, um, but yeah, he's a great kid, and he plays really cool, interesting beats. He comes from, a, like, a similar background, you know, kind of the metal and the punk and the hardcore backgrounds that we come from. So, so it's a really good, it's a good uh, marriage, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fuck, I forgot what I was going to ask. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, I noticed that, um, you know, it's been more than a year since, like, I interviewed Mike, and when you guys, when, when I interviewed him then, we were still doing, well, you guys were still doing the GoFundMe for yes. the Your Fault vinyl, and I was, uh-huh. you know, I never got to ask, you know, how successful was, like, that you know that record thing like you know i know you guys got to press it on color which was really fucking cool but i didn't know how well like it sold for you um it it did well we sold about a hundred of them so far um including the the pre-order um i mean the pre-order was very successful and it was kind of weird like doing that while being on a label i mean it it was it was definitely different um i feel like that's something we could have done without being on a label um so it's nice being up with no slip because you know we don't have to do crowdfunding (laughs) you know they're they're a label that's you know financially equipped to you know front the money for the for the you know the the release and everything so we just raise it the way it works is like we just get a certain amount of the records and then they get a certain amount of the records you know it, it's a it's a it's more of a partnership so we're, we're really happy that that's the route that it's going in but but yeah as far as the, the vinyl campaign yeah it, it was a lot of fun i mean it's slightly stressful but um like the last day of the campaign um, we made almost half the money <laughs> so it was it was it was like you know coming down to the wire and and you know basically that last day we had one person from uh, like little rock arkansas i think contribute like two thousand dollars damn yeah and um she it was like she said one of her dreams was to uh like be part of creating a record and i was like oh wow you know and, and she really likes us and um so it, it was really cool really you know nice of her to do that and you know we we offered all kinds of stuff and she's like i'll just take the 250 dollars package so that's you know we still sent her some extra stuff but you know <laughs> that's really <laughs> fucking did, cool but, yeah it was really cool we we did put like a uh, like a co-executive but we gave her like a co-executive producer uh credit on the back of the record oh know, wow well. you know so so you know there it is you know <laughs> but but yeah you know with with her helping with that you know insane amount of money we were able to do the, the red vinyl and have posters made and all that stuff so um with you know i don't i don't i don't want to touch on a sore spot or like you know push the boundaries with this if you know you don't have to answer it if you don't want to but i was going to ask about actually uh blunt face uh-huh. and uh you know you mentioned that you felt like you could have just done without being in a record label during the crowdfunding and and i was going to ask like like did you fully enjoy your experience with uh blunt face or do you feel like you could have like done without it sooner Uh, definitely uh, I don't know <laughs> I felt like or at least I mean we as a band felt like uh, they benefited more from us than we did from them and that's not you know trying to sound like arrogant or egotistical or anything I just, just you know I just felt like that's the way it was I mean anybody that knows who, who we are knows that we really try to promote and network and and get our name out there, you know, any way, shape, or form, you know. Um, you know, we're, we're promoting and networking on wars, I guess. But um, I just, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's not necessarily a sore spot. 
it's just if we had to do it all over again, we probably would have just done it ourselves. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, um, I mean, it's initially it started out pretty cool, but um, we did get, if there were some people that were a little, you know, the crowdfunding thing, it's always a kind of a touchy subject for some people. And I totally get it. Um, and that's why we tried to make the packages that people got, you know, special and tried to get all kinds of cool stuff. And, you know, shirt, whether it be shirts or buttons or stickers, posters, uh, all, you know, anything that we could possibly think of, um, you know, cassettes, uh, signed postcards. I mean, we, we threw together just about anything we could think of. Um, I work in a print shop and so I was printing off all kinds of, <laughs> you know, little cool stuff. And, you know, we even had a poster that had everybody, every contributor's name on it. And our, our bass player did the artwork for it. And we, we put a lot of time and effort into it. And I just felt like we did all the work, <laughs> you know, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that's just kind of where I'm, where I'm at with that. So I felt like that it just, we could have done it ourselves. Well, um, from my perspective, and probably on behalf of most of the people from Metal Devastation Radio, since we kind of already, like, don't really associate ourselves with Blunt Face anymore, like, I know I know, me and Zach felt this way, like, we, we thought that, you know, so fucking cool getting that record in, but I remember flipping it over and how fucking huge the Blunt Face record label was on the back of it, and thinking that they... In my opinion, I felt like they shouldn't have made that so goddamn big on the back of your record if they didn't contribute <laughs> much of anything to it. Because, like... Sure. Like, sure. Like, um, I mean, to, to be fair, um, we... And here's another kind of funny thing. <laughs> we laid out the art, and um, the guy that we had put, the, put all that together, I mean, I don't think blunt face really had anything to do with it being large like that I oh, think okay. that was our you know that was our call um, well the guy that laid it out it was his call we <laughs> approved it let's put it that way and uh, but no I, I understand and, I, and when we laid it out at the time the, there wasn't really I mean all this stuff was submitted like way in advance and you know I don't think the, uh, <laughs> for lack of a better word, I don't think the regret <clears throat> had set in yet. <laughs> I, I really don't. I mean, I don't want to talk bad about anybody. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, um, <clears throat> even if it was, you know, put together later, like the art, I don't think we would have, like, made their, their uh, the Bluff Face logo in, like, small or whatever, just out of spite, you know? Yeah, just, yeah. You know, we're, we're just not that kind of band or those that kind of people, Yeah, you know? But uh, I uh, I can see that uh, people that followed the process and, you know, Metal Devastation Radio were a huge part of this process. And, you know, DJ Thunderhead, I mean, he's on the record. You know, he did the, the intro to the first song and then he did the chains at the end of uh, Chains Around You. And, you know, he put all that stuff together for us. So. Yeah. And and that's his voice saying, Grave Huffer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, he, so, you know, Mike's on the freaking record, man. And so, uh, and, and then Metal Dub Station Radio, like, there were so many DJs that, like, helped support it. And then uh, Zach's wife, uh, Marietta, she drew the shirt design and the button and sticker art and, and so you know it was like you, know, you guys helped us <laughs> quite a bit you know I mean a lot more than the label did by far yeah 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 it was really really cool and exciting to actually kind of be a part of that like I remember like we were always sharing all that shit, and we, we were trying to promote the fuck out of it. Like, I remember Zach was all over that. Yeah, man, and, and I was like, dude, it was just the coolest thing ever. You know, I mean, you, uh, pretty much 
damn near every DJ bought one. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, it's it's just a cool thing how big a part that NDR was, and you know, from the artwork to sounds to financial to you know, it's every aspect of it. Oh so yeah, it's amazing. You know, it's just it's amazing. Yeah, like when I order records and shit, usually like after three months, I'm like, where the fuck is it? And like, I'm, I'm getting pissed, but since I knew it was you guys and you guys had to fund that shit and like it, I know it would take a fucking long time to get all those pressed. You know, I, re- I was very, very patient with waiting for your record and what I, like that was from like April whenever I did the pre-order and then I think it came in, what, November? Somewhere around there? Uh, yeah, or- Oh yeah, I I but don't. Yeah. It, it was I know it was after Christmas because I remember being. Oh really yeah. Upset. <laughs> we were really upset about that. We were hoping to get a bike before Christmas, but it just didn't happen. And see, that was the thing. Like we had like zero input on like where they were pressed and or any of that stuff. And you know, I just I don't know. I just we and we had no idea who was even pressing them, and uh, I don't know. I just didn't. I like to know what's going on. I'm one of those kind of people. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I'm not a control freak, but you know, it's nice to know, like, hey, you know, we spent a long time and a lot of money on recording and mastering and all that, and then we hand it to the label and we have no clue what's going on with it. That was, some, and we didn't even get to listen to the test pressing. You know, I mean, that was kind of our decision because yeah, we just like we didn't want to wait another week or two for it to get here listen to it approve it and send it back so that's another thing that kind of was crappy is we don't even have any copies of the test pressing of the record oh damn and uh yeah and we just let the label take care of it and we trusted their judgment to say like, yeah you just listen to it and give me a report so we had a conversation about it and, you know they said it sounded fine and so we trusted them and thankfully it did so so yeah, there there are, there are a few sore spots about the <laughs> yeah. process. Not gonna deny it. Yeah, but even though I had to wait a while for it, I was really cool with it. And when it came in, I gotta say it was probably the most exciting unboxing I've ever had of a record. Like with all the the shit you guys included, like the right. the picks, the pins, the stickers, the posters. And then, you know, actually seeing in person that the record was red, that was so fucking cool. Right, yeah, I mean, it, it really did turn out, like I said, you know, I mean, I'm not gonna, it turned out really cool. But uh, again, I think that was because of our hard work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, do you guys have any uh, upcoming shows or anything like that? Yeah, we've had a bunch. Mike and I, Mike and I, we both work in the same office. We were talking about that today. How we have like thirteen shows coming up. Oh shit! And, I mean, it's not like a tour necessarily. Although we are gonna. It's funny. There's a. I'll I'll be on like Facebook or Twitter or whatever, and you'll see bands say like so and so tour, and it's like they'll play a show. <laughs> <laughs> one or two shows this weekend and then the next month they'll play a couple of shows and it's like ah, I don't, it's not really a tour guys you know it's I don't know I just, <laughs> yeah it's kind of it's kind of cheesy but um I mean if we're gonna call it anything it's like the we still have day jobs tour you know <laughs> I mean <laughs> because you know we have a lot of days off in between dates <laughs> so uh but yeah, uh, we actually have a show coming up this Saturday in Topeka, Kansas, and we've got one locally on the 16th, and then we go travel to Tulsa on the 20th, so that's three shows this month. Uh, July, uh, we don't have anything, I don't think. I think that's when we'll, yeah, we're going to try to write some material in July. Uh, August, we've got, I think, one show. It's a big one, though. It's, a, it's called the Trauma Fest. And it's in Iola, Kansas, just out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but that's where most good festivals are. So. Oh, yeah. 
so yeah it's gonna it's gonna be professionally uh, photographed and there's gonna be press there and stuff uh, and then September is a really busy month we've got uh, the Topeka Metal Fest that's a two day festival at the Jayhawk Theater there's like 36 bands or something something crazy and we're playing the first night I think it's the 20th that's a Friday night and we're like right in the middle of the lineup which is perfect oh yeah and yeah and um, we've got some friends in a, in a band called So Hill All Fard from Pittsburgh they're about at 45 10 minutes away they're playing it um, there's a band from Tennessee called In Full Darkness uh, they're like playing I think they're headlining one of the nights Oh, uh, Zach, DJ Zach was saying like and he really liked them and he's like man I can't believe you guys are playing with a full guard and I said oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah that's really cool uh, and then we're playing the next night uh, at a BMX competition like they have this stage that's set up in the middle of all these bike ramps and these bikers like pro- professional bikers do all these tricks while we're playing so that's uh, the 21st and then the 28th of September, we're playing a benefit to keep music in schools. It's called the Legacy of Rock. Uh, it's going to be like six or eight bands, and it's in uh, Pittsburgh, Kansas. Um, October is going to be really busy. <laughs> we've got like five or six shows. Um, we've got a show on... Let me think. Uh, I should have these dates pulled up, man. <laughs> guys are gonna be fucking busy right yeah man a- anywhere that'll have us so so yeah man thanks for letting me plug the shows oh yeah no problem man um yeah uh before i let you go would you be able to make a tag for my show yeah man all right well, just whenever you're ready you know just say you know this is richie from grave huffer and you're listening to dj doomslayer on metal devastation radio and add whatever the fuck you want to that yeah. What's up, everyone? This is Richie from Grave Offer, and you're listening to DJ Doom Slayer on Metal Devastation Radio. Crack it the fuck up.